welcome back to my channel if you've been visiting before and if not hello and welcome for the first time um, I'm following on from a video I made a couple of weeks ago when I was lucky enough to be able to um, choose some products from Hunky Dory for the love of stamps and some of their prism range and I made a video which is not the last video I made the one before that which you can check out on um, my channel um, which will still be there and following on from that video I've been really fortunate in that Hunky Dory have allowed me to choose another few products to make another video with today and I wanted to um, try out some of their ink pads uh, this is still part of their prism range which is a world of colour and they are a, a dye based ink um, they are water reactive so they are like quite a lot of other inks that I have but what I really liked about them was that they come in these really dinky little um, packaging and their felt is raised really nice and high so I thought I'd give a quick measurement so you can have a, an idea about how sort of small or large they are so they're approximately an inch one and a quarter inches square um, and I'm going to be trying out a few different techniques with those in my video today um, I picked four colors I went for black because uh, to me if you are st just starting out with your inks that is a must-have color and then I went for three other colors that was within the primary color spectrum so that they could also be mixed together so I went for a, a, a yellow so I've gone for canary yellow um, I didn't want a red so I wanted a, a pink but it sort of, sort of will still blend well with the other two colors and I've gone for camellia pink and I went for a paler blue so I've gone for periwinkle so hopefully we can get some nice blending and mixing of colors going on with those and to use with them I, I asked whether I would be allowed to try some of the foam blending tools now again these are very much like other blending tools that I have already in my crafting stash but I wanted to see if there was going to be something different about them and I have to say to start with oh they're very much like all my other blending tools but then when as soon as I attach the foam which you get six of with a pack of two um, foam tools the first thing I noticed is as soon as I had taken off my foam was the way in which the velcro was really firmly fixed to the wooden block now for me that is a major issue because some of the other ones I have they literally have one staple and I spend my whole time holding them on worrying that I'm going to actually pull them off but these feel certainly to me from first look very sturdy and that they won't fall apart easily so I'll be having a play with those and of course I had to have some more stamps because I love my stamping um, and in particular I do really like background stamps and in particular one of my favorite sorts of stamps is the script stamp so I asked whether I could try this um, set here which is called sketch background tiles for from for the love of stamps and there's the script and there's also this really nice hessian style background as well so I thought they would be good to use especially within art journaling and then this set here which is baroque backgrounds I thought the patterns on these were really nice but also because you're only getting a quarter of a circle I thought that was really versatile you'd be able to build it up into a semicircle a whole circle you've got lots of opportunities for pattern building within the stamps but also there are one two three four sentiments in particular I liked this one embrace your dreams follow your heart love your life which I thought was a really nice art journaling um, sentiment that would go really well in those and be the very best you can be is another really nice one that I like because they're very generic they can be used for so many different things within my um, video today I'm also going to probably use um, one of the butterflies from the previous set that um, I had which is the butterfly wishes and I may even have a little use of the distress dots stencil which I had from last time as well so that's my little intro I'm going to then do my project which I was going to do a card and then I thought no I'm going to stick with the art journaling because I think that um, a lot of people um, have probably seen hunky-dory products used um, with card making so I thought I'd do 
do art journaling again because it is something slightly different for those products and I'll see you on the other side. I'm working in my six inch Dina Wakely journal which has really thick watercolour paper and I had already um, placed a, a layer of clear gesso across both the pages. I started by thinking I was going to brayer some of the ink onto the pages. Uh, it didn't quite work out how I'd hoped. I added water to see if that would make a difference but I think the colour was just too light to show up very well so I in the end decided to actually place the ink pads directly onto the page and this seemed to work a lot better however as the video goes through you'll notice that I do struggle quite a bit with the blue and I think it's just because it is a really pale colour especially in contrast to the pink and the yellow which are really quite strong. making sure that the um, inks had dried because I didn't want them to muddy up too much. I also didn't really want to be putting the ink pad directly into the water which I then went and did with the blue which you'll then see that I do try and, and wipe it off because I realised straight away that it probably wasn't the best idea for the ink pad. I then still wasn't happy with the strength of the colour so I decided to use the blending tool to add more blue and this did seem to uh, give a much greater depth to the blue colour. And once that was down I decided I wanted to strengthen up the other colours as well. The inks do work nicely with the water and there was beginning to be a little bit of blending between the pink and the yellow making some nice orange tones as well. I then wanted to add a little bit more texture into the background so I used the Distress Dots mask with the Camellia Pink on the blending tool. adding it in sort of random areas as I felt it was required adding little bits where there might be gaps that I felt needed a bit more I then decided to use the blue with the script stamp and straight away realized that again because it was very pale color it just didn't show up at all and I decided to go with the black to really make this script stand out against the background I started on the block but I wasn't worried about making sure that I was getting an excellent impression because I was only really creating a background and then because I only wanted to use some little parts of it I took it off the block and used it directly in my hand as well. To make my focal point I wanted to create a background for some stamping so I'm using watercolour cardstock and I squashed the inks onto my blending mat first of all before adding a bit of water and smooshing it onto the card. Again, you can see that the pink and the yellow are so much stronger than the blue that they really just blended together and made a, a whole orange sheet. So I decided to add some of the other colors separately. Again, the blues just wasn't really showing up. So I added some of the yellow and then some of the pink in a different way.
I decided to this time actually splatter some of the pink on um, with my paintbrush I needed a bit more more of the actual ink to make it stand out and I really quite liked this effect it's something I do a lot with paint if I hadn't really done an awful lot with um, ink before and then I tried to do the same with the blue but again it wasn't really showing up so the best method with this lighter color does seem to be to use the blending foam and I applied that around and across the ink to get some little patches of blue as well and because these inks are water reactive you are able to sprinkle water and then lift some of the color off as well it is also something to be aware of when you're using the inks normally in my art journal I do use archival inks because they are permanent but because I knew that I wasn't going to put anything else on top of these the inks in my in my art journal I wasn't worried that they were water reactive because I knew I wasn't going to add anything to make them activate again now using that sort of quarter circle to create a full circle with black ink at this point I actually was standing up because I needed to see where I was trying to line up the the stamp I wasn't trying to line it up exactly because I knew I was going to be cutting it out but I wanted it to be roughly in the right places I used one of my dies and I didn't have one that was quite big enough to cut right round it but I wasn't too worried and I then cut it in half here I've got another piece of uh, watercolour card and I cut it about an inch and a half wide and I'm using the blending tool to add some of each of the three colours and I wanted to try to create a more brighter solid um, block of colour for these with a little bit of blending in between as well and you'll see where the yellow and the blue um, overlap you could do get a really nice green there's a little bit of orange but because that pink is so strong it was a lot harder to blend I think if I was to do it again I would maybe use a bit less of the pink on the blending foam to start with again adding some water splatters to create a bit more texture I'm using one of the little square tiles from the Baroque background with the black ink again to create a pattern across the piece of card so sort of like a border I felt that all the elements needed a little bit of a, a black border to frame them so I again used the blending tool this time with the black ink and just gently edged each of the border pieces uh, then also the semicircles and then finally to bring the whole page together and to create a frame for the eye I went round each of the edges of the pages as well. When I stuck the semicircles onto the page, 
I was making sure that I was even a little bit of a gap in between so that where the crease of the art journal was, as soon as the book was shut it wasn't going to be um, too bulky. And on the other piece of scrap left over from earlier I stamped three of the same butterfly from the butterfly wishes and one of the sentiments from the baroque backgrounds and I edged these again with black and then attached them with some glue gel. Thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed and there are links to my blog and to the hunky dory website in the description box below. If you really enjoyed the video I would love it if you would like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.